Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm here to talk about the new VIP loyalty program coming to Dungeons & Dragons Online, which um, is something we knew was coming. They talked about it last year, and they previewed a program, and then the program kind of halted. We didn't hear anything about it for, like, pretty much the entire past year, and apparently now it is actually coming on May 1st. So to give you a bit of background, why is there a VIP loyalty program? Well, from my perspective, as somebody who doesn't entirely understand how the numbers work at the company, because I don't get to read their sales figures, um, a lot of people, myself included, feel like the VIP program just doesn't really offer enough in the current landscape. If you think about what um, the VIP programs are offered in other video games, it just feels like what you get at the DDO VIP program has gotten worse and worse over time. The biggest thing is that they've shifted from a largely uh, quest pack focused model, which they were using for a long time, to a more expansion focused model. So one of the big sellers of the VIP is you get access to all the content. But like, you don't really get access to all the content, right? Like if you uh, are VIP, you don't get End of the Underdark, or Shadowfell Conspiracy, or The Mists of Ravenloft, or The Masterminds of Sharn, or The Feywild, or Saltmarsh, or Isle of Dread, or Vecna. All of these things are pieces of content that are locked outside of the VIP program, which, you know, kind of really devalues it. Given that we're getting another expansion this summer that will not be included in VIP, and you better believe you're going to get a mini expansion next year that will also not be included in VIP, it feels like if you're a VIP member, not only are you getting less because you're getting fewer quest packs, but also you don't have to buy an extra expansion thing on top of that basically every year. So that doesn't feel great, and it doesn't feel good to many players, myself included, and so uh, that's why they're trying to beef up the VIP program. So let's go over what the program is and uh, kind of talk about some of the benefits you can expect to see out of that. So they say introducing our new VIP program, which is in addition to their current offers. So they're not taking anything away from the old VIP. They're adding new stuff, which is a VIP every month loyalty reward program. So it said how it works. When the program starts, VIPs can claim the latest reward, which updates every month based on how long you've maintained the program. So... When you sign up to VIP, you get five shared account storage slots. And for the first month signed up, you also gain an extra 500 points. So usually you get 500 points a month. That's going to be bumped up to 1,000 in your first month. Then the second month, it will go back to 500. Uh, and you'll get 500 a month after that, as you'll be getting something different each month, like the VIP bag of many things, a bonus character slot, which I assume is only while VIP. 10% uh, item durability ward, another VIP bag of many things, a lightning storm trail, cosmetic lightning effect, a VIP artisan's advantage. We'll talk about some of these things later as they're going to be below in the frequently asked questions, a bag, a discovery boost, blah, 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 blah. So I think there's a couple things that are kind of confusing to many is uh, do you keep these things when you're not VIP? If I get my bonus character slot, do I lose it when I'm not VIP? These are questions that are not inherently obvious from this chart here. And what is in these bags and is it really worth it? So they kind of break it down. So basic stuff, um, you get extra storage while you remain VIP, makes sense. Um, you get 500 bonus points for the first month, again, makes sense. A VIP bag of many things comes with a whole bunch of stuff. A raid bypass timer with 150 DDO points. Uh, a ra rest shrine, which might be useful to some, but for a lot of people like myself, I just have them stacked up. I don't even know what to do. A Sibri's Dragon Shard. Um, that's literally free in the game. Uh, 300 Sentient XP is less than you get from pretty much one run of uh, White Plume Mountain. Glamour Dust, 50. You can't buy anything with that. A Mirror of Glamouring. Uh, so that allows you to uh, copy a cos like an item cosmetic. Again, I think it's worth 200 points, 250 points. Omni Spell Dust, which is just convenient and you don't really need. And a Legendary Raid by Bypass Timer. So basically, they're going to give you a bag that lets you choose your 150 to 200 DDO point thing out of the bag. Which, going to be honest, the fact that it's on here not once, but twice, but three times. Um, kind of mid. Actually, I would describe it as bad, not mid, um, in terms of reward. Next, we have the third month where you get a bonus character slot. This is an extra character slot while you are VIP. Um, this does not just get added to your account. So the loyalty only applies while you're giving Standing Stone Games your money. Uh, the second you stop giving them your money, even though you did it for three months, you don't get to keep the character slot. Uh, you're going to see a trend here. Um, 
10% item durability ward. Uh, you get 10% chance to avoid all item wearing characters while you are VIP. I actually don't hate this concept in general as a cool bonus. Um, it's unfortunate again that it only applies while you are a VIP as you had to spend four months of VIP to be able to get this perk. Um, so that's, you know, just a, uh, not really the nicest thing for all the people who've been, you know, but if you miss out on this and you want to get that also, this isn't even the most important thing because lots of items don't really experience item wear. Uh, there's level lots of weapon types and other item types specifically, like anything that's not a standard weapon, like ice or force that just ignores it. And there's spells and legendary effects that prevent you or epic effects that prevent you from taking item wear in general. So there's like a level of convenience here, but honestly, for the most part, it's ignorable. VIP bag of many things we already talked about. The Lightning Storm Trail. It's a cosmetic lightning effect in your character that leaves behind a static uh, when you move that doesn't prevent footprints from displaying. Um, I'm curious about how this is going to work. I wonder if it's going to be automatically applied to your character or if you'll have to claim it from a vendor. Um, because if you have to claim it from a vendor, that's just tedious and annoying. And if it just, you know, is only there while you're VIP, then you don't have it. I would also be kind of disappointing. Then we get a Artisan's Advantage. So you get, while you are a VIP, you get 10% extra crafting XP. In addition, you get, uh, each time you click a collectible node, you get a chance to gain a crafting material token. We don't know what that does, unless it's listed down here, um, which is not. So uh, could be anything. I have no idea what this is. We'll have to find out. Um, and then the 10% crafting XP while VIP. Why isn't that just in the VIP? These are just great questions. I don't, I don't really know. But now we get to the greater bag of many things. Your pick of a heart of wood of pretty much any kind, the plus 20 is the big seller here. This is usually 2,500 DDO points where everything else is less. Or you could get a 12 hour elixir of discovery. Now this says, it doesn't tell you what it is. It just says VIP elixir of discovery. Elixirs of discovery increase the odds that you pull a named item out of a chest and they're either five, 10 or 15% depending on the quality. It doesn't say that here. So it could really be anything. I would assume 15% since this is a sovereign potion, which is the highest potion for 50%. I'd assume they would go with the highest elixir of discovery. But again, I don't know. It's not entirely clear and a 12 hour uh, XP potion. Um, it is a better value in terms of you're getting something more, um, but I don't know. It's like just kind of disappointing again as well. Uh, you, know, you have to be subscribed to the game for eight months and then you get yourself the option to get 12 hours of extra experience, which is like kind of cool, but you know, they, they just do that on the weekend. You know, that's just like a weekend boost. They'll do like extra um, buddy bonus XP or whatever it is. And so again, it's on top of the VIP, but it's not like it's something we don't already have in other places. And the Elixir of Discovery thing is super hit or miss. Um, the problem with the Elixir of Discovery is if you're playing on like normal difficulty, even though it bumps your name drop rate chance from 10% up to 25%, again, we're assuming that it's got the highest amount, um, and you run Isle of Dread on normal, in 12 hours, you're running at, you know, maybe you're not the fastest, so you run in an hour and a half to get through all of Isle of Dread. You could do six runs through of Isle of Dread, which means you're going to get probably not even half of the total number of items in 12 hours. Um, if you're running on elite difficulty, the odds are a lot higher, but still, um, you, this just might be a swing and a miss. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not the best reward. Then we get the VIP Discovery Boost, a 1% increased chance of name loot dropping for your characters in chests that stacks with elixirs of discovery. Um, I do like the idea of them doing something kind of like this, but 1% uh, chance is so small, it's invisible. You can't even notice it. So it might be active. It might not be active. Isn't that amazing? They're going to give you a bonus you can't even see as a player. It's not noticeable to the human eye. You'd have to track your loot on characters for thousands of chess pulls to be able to see a difference. So maybe they are adding the game. Maybe they're not. I don't know. Uh, then we have VIP bag of many things, the bonus account storage. So you get an extra five uh, shared account storage while you're VIP. And for the 12th month, they're going to give you a special mount that is a storm cloud that you can ride on like your Goku or something. Uh, but it requires you to be VIP in order to be summoned. Uh, so there's a there's a visual here. There's the character effect, the lightning character effect when you're running around. And here is the storm cloud mount. Now I find this very interesting because the storm cloud mount you can get it while you're like moving around uh, and stuff, but it's 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 only uh, you have to be subscribed for 12 months to get access to this. And I don't know how they're going to do it where they say 
um, there will be, uh, you have to claim it on the each month and then you'll have to do it in the future um, where it's gonna change in future years. If I'm at month 11 and then they change it, does that the next month, does that mean I don't get the storm cloud rider mount or will it be additive where maybe they add more bonuses, they do a separate list and maybe in two years time, there's three different loyalty rewards. So now somebody new signs up, gets three different months worth of rewards, or are they gonna replace it? Because they did say the word to change here, which means maybe that's gonna be a different list for people. And again, you might lose that on one of the perks you think is maybe interesting out of the system. Additionally, it has to be claimed. So if you are subscribed, but you're not able to play for any particular reason, whether it's because you're uh, away on an extended amount of work, you just had a newborn and things are different, or even you just decided to change your hobby, but you have the year long sub to the game because you want to support it. If you don't log in, you're unable to get uh, the actual reward. However, there is a new always available VIP perk, which is that VIPs can just swap out spells. Now, this isn't really clear. Um, if you're a new player, you can swap spells depending on your class. Uh, any classes that uh, kind of memorize their spells, wizards, clerics, artificers, alchemists, they can swap spells when they feel like it at any time in a tavern. You can just do that. That's how the game works. This is specifically for classes that generally can't swap their spells that are meant to be uh, just locked into their lists like sorcerers or bards or favored souls. It's the general idea. Uh, you can overwrite that mechanic by either using something called a Blood of Dragons, which lets you swap your spells out whenever you want. It's an item you can get in-game, and it's basically free because of how easy they are to get. Um, and you, if you don't have one, you can just do it once every three days. Uh, however, here, the VAP will let you do that whenever you want. Cool. Um, now, I'm going to go through the frequently asked questions, but you might <laughs> have noticed that I don't generally have the... Uh, highest of opinion here in terms of describing some of these new perks and features. Um, honestly, I think most of this stuff is pretty bad in general. Um, now, this is on top of the VIP. I'm already a VIP, and I'm not going to stop my VIP subscription because I think some of these bonuses are bad. Um, because I'm VIP, because I like the XP bonus, I like the movement speed, I don't want to have to think about buying content when it comes out in terms of the individual quest packs. I don't really like a la carte systems. If I'm going to play a game, I'd rather just like have the program thing that gives me all of the stuff. Um, and of course, like many people, I want to support sending some games. So uh, not only do I make content around it, I do pay for the damn thing. Uh, so uh, seeing stuff like this, where none of these things on this list make me want to subscribe to the game, I just get kind of confused. And uh, I make, I'm gonna make some comparisons to other video games that I think kind of just have a better response to their VIP program. So uh, in my opinion, I think one of the best ways to get people excited about your program when you're trying to do something like this is to give them something that they can't get somewhere else. Uh, if Sangstone Games wants more people to subscribe and they're trying to beef it up so more people do, why would somebody want to subscribe when if they want the cloud mount, they have to subscribe for a whole year to get it? And they don't just subscribe for a year. It's not like if you bought a year of VIP, you get the mount today. You have to subscribe for a year and then log in every month and then go talk to an NPC to acquire the new thing. And these new things also aren't even like across your whole account. The VIP bag of many things is one character. The artisan's advantage, that token, you get one token. Um, so you're not even getting like a lot of different things applying to lots of your characters or your whole account. You're getting something small, something itemized, um, which of course, as I said, is not gonna feel as good as it might otherwise. And it doesn't really, from my perspective, I don't think anybody is gonna be enticed to want to get VIP that isn't already VIP. So I'm not really sure what the point of the program is. Now you may be wondering, well, what would something be like that be? What would be something that would actually make you want to subscribe and go VIP? And I'm glad you asked because I'm giving you some answers. You see, I play a video game called The Lord of the Rings Online. This game is produced by Standing Stone Games. It's the other product that they make. And they had issues where people didn't want to be VIP anymore. So they sweetened up the program. They added an NPC here called Wenda Cranesbill, who's the VIP rewards vendor. When talking to her, she has the VIP rewards and you get these two items. So if I accept the quest and then I say, yes, thank you. I have two items added into my inventory. My inventory is a mess, don't think about that. 
So what are these two items? The first is an item called the Subscriber's Jug. What this does is it accelerates crafting time and prevents item wear from combat, crafting, and defeat. So if you die, if you attack stuff, like your weapons can't go down. You're, there's no durability loss on anything. Now, remember that this is in the Lord of the Rings Online. I just don't have any durability at all for the next 14 days while I'm subscribed, and I can just talk to this character like once a week. Now, obviously, I have to talk to this character, and it would be ideal if this was just like populated in the inventory, but it's not terribly inconvenient because Wenda is everywhere. She's in every, every housing area. She is uh, in the center of major cities. She's all over the place, so it's very easy to get to this character. It's not ideal, but it's not too bad. By contrast, for Dungeons & Dragons Online, um, they're going to give you 10% off after four months as opposed to like, pop, you get it right away. On top of that, the crafting time it takes a while to craft items. There's a little progress bar when you craft stuff. It just makes it lightning, lightning, lightning fast. The convenience level is fantastic. Should the crafting time be that long in the first place? Maybe not, but that's how the game was designed way before it went free to play with longer crafting times. And this is just a positive boon. But we're not done. The next item is the subscriber town services. This item right here. This item lets you do town services. And what are town services? You can use a shop to sell while you're out on the landscape. You can go into your bank. You can go into your shared storage. You can go into your wardrobe. You can access the auction house and you can access the legendary item forge. The only thing from a town that is missing from this list is the ability to buy potions from vendors. You still have to buy potions if you want to buy one while you're in a town. Outside of this, you can do all your town stuff wherever you are find a cool item and think, oh man, this would go good on the auction house. You can post it right away. Think, oh my goodness, you know what? I'm missing some food for my adventure and I can't craft it. Maybe I want to buy some. I can buy it on the auction house right away. Pick up an item, like a craft piece of crafting gear you want to trade from one character to the next. I don't have to go to the bank and bank it and then log into the character, go to the bank and take it out. I can just put it in the bank here into my shared storage and then log in on another character. It's so convenient and so unbelievable I know people that are vehemently against going VIP because they just don't want to spend the money, but they just have to because it's it's like so good. These are things you literally can't do anywhere else. You just can't get these features done because it's so convenient and how much time it saves you. And so it just feels good to have this town services, this special bonus, especially when like you're raiding in a guild. And I remember I used to raid all the time in World of Warcraft and it would be a huge problem where after a night of wiping on the raid boss, uh, you'd have to go back in town and repair, or you'd have to get a guy with the mount that had the repair guy on the back, so then they would, you'd would you have people leave the raid and then it would mount up, or if you mounted up in the raid, you can then repair all your gear and stuff. This saves so much time while raiding, because now you don't have to do any of that. Everyone's just immune to item durability. It's fantastic. Not everybody's going to be VIP in your raid, of course, but funnily enough, a lot of people end up being VIP in the raid. So that's a pretty big deal. So they give you something that you can't get anywhere else. And the VIP program, I mean, I guess you could argue that the Storm Trail cosmetic you can't get anywhere else, but like, who cares? And the Storm Cloud Rider, yeah, I, I guess it's pretty neat. Do I want to wait a year and just hope that I logged in every time to make sure I clicked on it to get the thing? Uh, fantastic. My next example, Elder Scrolls Online. So some of you might have played this game, some of you not doesn't matter. Uh, they did a great job of having a membership program that actually gives you stuff that you think you're going to want. So full access to all game DLC packs available in the Crown Store, new quests, dungeons, and more. Now, of course, this doesn't include all of the expansions in the game. However, um, it's a lot of content uh, similar to how DDO does it. Uh, they give you 600 or 1650 crowns per month in the in-game store. Um, this is basically the same thing as DDO points. They've actually increased this number over the years. Um, it used to be lower when I first started playing, and they've actually increased the number over time based on the amount of stuff they've added to the store. So it feels like it's a better buy-in when you get the V plus package. They double your bank space. Just double it. Just straight up double it. That's fantastic. Now, these are things that are numbers based that they could do in Dungeons and Dragons Online. They could just say, oh, while you're VIP, your shared storage is considered double. They could do that. Um, but instead, we're going to be getting uh, five at 11 months. It's very cool. And then they have the buy in the things where it's like you can't do this in another way. Unlimited storage for crafting materials. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen in a game. 
You know how in DDO we have all these like crafting things where there's like shroud crafting and all the collectibles and all this other stuff and we have the shared crafting storage? Well, what the unlimited crafting storage here is it's a bank that takes all crafting materials in the whole game and it just vacuum cleans them. It takes them out of all of your character's inventories and it is shared amongst all your characters. So you never have to transfer crafting materials from one character to another. If I'm playing my my uh, Dragon Knight at level 15 and I go you know, pick up some wood, it automatically the wood goes into the shared crafting storage. And if I log into my crafter, he already has it. The level of convenience this affords you is unbelievable. And you don't have this when you're not a uh, VIP. But the cool thing about it is that when you lose the VIP, so if you no longer have the ESO Plus, you can still access the storage. You just can't put anything in it. So if you want, you could go one month on, one month off. Have a month on of the VIP, put everything into the storage, and then the next month kind of have to deal with some things filling up your inventory, but being able to craft out of your storage. It's a really cool benefit, um, and it's something that is completely outside the realm of what the game is normally doing. It's this huge extra thing that gets that buy-in that makes you go, man, you know what? Ah, I really want to go VIP on top of the other things, and you still have access to it in some capacity even when you stop being VIP, unlike half of this stuff. Um, and then also they give you like exclusive ability to dye costumes, which is just really cool. Um, and apparently they give you like, you know, so there's like the other stuff. They also have special deals where there are things that are gonna be in the store that will be cheaper if you happen to be VIP. So they have the regular sales and then they have the plus sales where, oh, this, if you are if you have ESO plus, you get even more sales. So where am I all going with all of this? I don't really know what the VIP loyals, loyalty rewards program is for. Uh, I don't know who this is for. Um, and I don't really know if anyone is going to do a buy-in from this. Uh, my video is not meant to discourage you guys from if you're excited about this or if you're not excited about this or like, you know, to, if you're excited to like say don't buy it or anything like that. It's more of like a, just a question of just straight up confusion um, where I don't really know who the target audience of this is, why somebody should get this, why somebody will you know, feel like there's a, there's even like a sense of loyalty here. I, it just is confusing to me. Um, and I, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that I just, I really don't understand about the motivation behind putting some of the things in here the way they are, especially stuff like the one-time use on one server only, uh, things like that. Like, I just, I don't even, I don't even understand. Um, like, yeah, you're gonna have to talk to Violet Prayer Green in the Hall of Heroes once a month. I don't want to do that. Can't have it auto collect on my account. Final Fantasy 14. I didn't even know there was a loyalty rewards in Final Fantasy 14. Apparently, it's just automatically added to your account and you get cosmetics you can use on all of your characters. I didn't have to collect anything. I didn't even know it was in the game and I got it for free. But this one, imagine you subscribe and you didn't know that you talked to Violet Peregrine and for your first month, you just didn't do it. I wonder how often they're gonna advertise that. I, I don't know. Um, do these boosts stack with other boosts? Yeah, the Discovery Boost with VIP stacks with other boosts. Note the extended VIP of Discovery and Elixir do not stack, which kind of makes sense, I guess. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, the shared bank storage is only while you're VIP. <laughs> oh no, the Mountain Lightning Storm are only available while you're VIP. Did you subscribe to our game for a year? Did you give us either $100 US for a whole year's subscription or do it piecewise at $15 a month? Well, guess what? You might have done that for a year, but you're going to lose that cloud afterwards. You have to claim it. Oh, it actually says, a crafting token is new item the VIP is going to, can obtain from collectible slots inside the game lets you select a collectible of your choosing. <sighs> and you have to reacquire the lightning trail every time. So... I, as somebody who, sorry, I'm just like, I'm like reading this stuff and I'm like pausing. As somebody who does all the hardcores, okay, I have all the hardcore rewards on my account. You know how often I use the bloody footprints or the gold footprints for the cool hardcore cosmetics? Pretty much never. I have to go talk to a guy and go through like a bunch of nested menus to make sure I'm clicking all the stuff that I want. It's not like the end of the world. I don't know, when I'm playing the game, I'm just like, I reincarnate, I'm doing it on stream, I'm talking to people. It just doesn't seem more prudent to go and like talk to the character to get my golden footprints to be able to get it. 
how often am I going to be going to collect my lightning trail? You know, think about how convenient it is to do cosmetics in a game like Path of Exile, where it's literally just a menu in your UI that you click on, or Elder Scrolls, where it's a menu in the UI that you click on, or Lord of the Rings, where it's not a menu in the UI that you click on, except they added the town services, so the menu in the UI is actually right here. There's the wardrobe. It's right there. Uh, and in DDO, we have to go talk to a guy every time we reincarnate. Uh, it's kind of funny. Anyways, uh, I like a lot of the things that DDO has done recently. Um, I'm ex very excited for the Myth Draenor expansion. Um, the most recent patch has been so much fun. Dragonlord is very cool. Year of the Dragon, very cool stuff. And it's crazy to me to think of the just the contrast between Year of the Dragon and the VIP loyalty rewards. I don't even know why there is a loyalty rewards program. It just seems confusing. Like, what's what's the point of this? Why do I have to wait six months to get a lightning storm trail effect that I can only use with a VIP that I might not even use anyway? It's kind of baffling. It's kind of confusing. Anyway, that's my take on the VIP loyalty rewards. Um, I don't understand them. I don't understand the motivation. Um, they are mostly bad and uninteresting, and I don't get it. So um, if you're going to be VIP, the reason you're VIP is probably like why I am. So you can open every quest on Elite the first time on new characters, and uh, you like 10% XP. But yeah, I don't know. I would be shocked to find out if this pushed the needle. I have no idea. And these are concerns, by the way, I voiced a year ago when they first announced this idea. Um, and I think somebody in my Discord actually posted uh, the pictures from the initial uh, preview when they showed us what some of the stuff was. And a lot of the stuff where met myself and many other people, it's right here, were like, yeah, I don't know about this. And they just went through with it as is. So, I mean, like I said, if it, anybody buys into it, maybe. If And also, if I'm wrong, please do let me know. If you think that this... If you were like somebody who wasn't a VIP before, but this would make you a VIP, let me know. I just... I, I can't imagine someone going, ah, I would have been VIP, but I just... It was missing that oomph. But now that I can get, after two months, 300 sentient XP, you know, that is worth that extra $30. So uh, let me just go ahead and do that. Again, I don't know. I find it confusing. And especially when it's like, you look at ESO Plus and it's so good. The, the Lotro is so good. Um, it's just it's kind of kind of confusing. Anyways, that's it. That's all I got. So thank you for watching. Hope you had a fantastic time. Uh, let me know what you think about the VIP loyalty rewards. And I'll see you guys in the next one for a hopefully more like just positive video. I don't know. Bye-bye.